Hello my lovies, welcome to my first fountain pen collection video for 2022. I use these bad boys on the daily and I re realized I never even talked about it. So let's do that now. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Gaia Quintana. I am crazy about journaling. I am Dutch, so I live in the Netherlands. So I cannot always give you the recommendations for outside Europe, but if you're in Europe, I've got some cool places where you can shop your fountain pens and this clear container, for example. So I currently have five fountain pen inks. Uh, or sorry, five fountain pens, but I only use these four. And um, as you can see, they're in this clear container. So let me get them out for you. Because this clear container, I'm gonna get questions about, I already know. Um, I got this at Hema, which is a Dutch department store. It came in a set of two for only three bucks, I believe. So I have another one that I can stack on top of this. I don't have a cute pen pouch yet because I haven't found one. And I also like these clear containers because then I can see what's in them. And I tend to use my stuff more if I know what I have. And I mean, you know, clear containers show you exactly what you have. So <laughs> that's why I have this one on my desk. I've also learned recently that storing fountain pens horizontally instead of standing up is better for the ink flow. Um, and I think that really might be true because I've had some fountain pens that I had been storing up straight and they were always clogged up and it didn't really write well. So yeah, that's a little quick tip in between. Now let's jump into my history with fountain pens because I think it'll explain why I love them so much and it might give you an idea of what you can do with fountain pens yourself if you don't already have one or if you're uh, not a connoisseur yet or an expert. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into it. So this is one of my very, very old fountain pens. It's a Parker pen. They don't even sell this anymore. Um, so don't worry about it, but I'm just showing you. Um, this one's really old. You can see the style. It's not very pretty anymore, but um, I used to write with this a lot until I realized that there are different kinds of fountain nips <laughs> and there are different kinds of fountain pens. And that's when I started getting into it. And that happened like last year. So in the Netherlands, back in the day, so I'm 34, so you do the math, I'm bad at it. Uh, but back in the day, you'd had to learn how to write with a fountain pen before you were allowed to write with a uh, ballpoint pen. That was back in the day. I don't know if kids still learn how to write with fountain pen um, in the Netherlands right now, but I know that I'm very happy that they did teach me and people from my generation uh, because writing with a fountain pen, it just makes everything look so much more chic. It allows you to write with care and attention and be very conscious of the, the writing that you put down on the paper. So it's kind of also um, like a slow living tool if you will and yeah this one's really old so I don't really use it anywhere but it's a Parker pen that used to be my go-to brand uh, but I've switched now so let's get into that. So this is the first fountain pen that I got when I got back into writing with uh, fountain pens for my journals and this is a Lamy Safari. This is uh, a gray version and it has a special name but I don't know what it was anymore. <laughs> Anyway, they have this in all kinds of colors and it was only 19 euros and 15 cents. So I live in the Netherlands. So if you buy this outside of Europe, it might be a little bit more expensive, but I paid 19.50 for it. So um, yeah, and it is a the heaviest fountain pen that I have and it has like a starter, like a starter handle, if you can see. And Lamy is one of the fountain pens that are suggested for children because of this grip. It has a beginner grip, <laughs> so you can easily hold it and write. And other fountain pens often have like a like a round um, grip, and that may be a little bit harder to hold. Also, I write with my right hand, so this is perfectly for me. And I know that Lamy, it's a German brand. They also have fountain pens for people that are left-handed. So um, yeah, you're covered <laughs> if you're left-handed. As you can see, there's like a little window for the ink reservoir. And if you open it, I have a converter in there. And it's currently inked in gray. So I have some gray inked in here. Um, and I will do another video on inks 
later, but uh, this is a converter. It's durable and sustainable because you can use this again and again. And you also have um, ink patterns uh, or patterns, you know, those little plastic bottles that you can not reuse. So I try to opt for converters for every fountain pen that I have because it's more durable and better for the environment. So uh, yeah, that's what I have in here, currently inked with something gray. And that's not the name of the ink, by the way. I just can't remember, so I just call it something gray. Uh, but this is uh, a fountain pen that I really like. The only thing about this, as you can see, it has a little bit of a longer handle, which I like because then it rests on this little crevice in my hand. But if you put the cap on it, it's too heavy. If I put the cap on it, it is out of balance for me. It just hangs over a little bit more and I have to like put more pressure on my fingers to really write. So I usually write without the cap, but I think if you have bigger hands than I have, um, you might want that extra weight at the end to just like balance it out. But for me, I always write with the cap off. It's um, the heaviest fountain pen that I have <laughs> because this material is a little bit sturdier than resin. Some fountain pens are made with resin, but this one isn't. Um, I think this is just normal like plastic, but for some reason it is heavier than the other pens that I have. Anyway, this is the Lamy Safari. <clears throat> they often recommend this for people who've never written with a fountain pen before because of this grip. Um, and yeah, you could definitely give this a try. It's a good fountain pen ink. They have several nibs. I currently have an extra fine nib on this because my handwriting is quite small and I will show you later. Um, so if you buy a Lamy fountain pen, definitely check um, <laughs> which nib you put on there. If, if you have like a big um, handwriting style or your letters are quite big, you might want to go for like um, a medium nip because then you get more ink and a thicker line. So that's a little bit of a quick tip from me to you. I'm just gonna go from big to small. So this is the Caveco Student 70 Soul and this one is the orange version and it has really nice gold details it definitely looks way more luxurious than the Lamy. This was also more expensive. This one was $59.95 in Euro. So 59 Euros and 95 cents, so almost 60 bucks. And um, I really like this uh, fountain pen because it reminds me of the 70s and fashion wise, the 70s are my favorite, favorite era. Um, so when I saw this pen, I was like, I have to have this. Um, so this one doesn't have like a click on cap. You have to like screw this off. Wait, oh my God, I really screwed it on tight. But you have to like screw it off and then you see this amazing gold grip and a very, very pretty gold nip. I am very sorry, but I dropped my camera lens <laughs> or rather it fell off my tripod and then the camera fell on the lens on the floor uh, and so I cannot zoom any further but I hope you can see that the nib is very very pretty it's very very you know gorgeous <laughs> so this grip as you can see is more round and if you don't like your fingers to be forced in a certain position just like with the Lamy that like the triangle shape grip then this might be more your thing because this is a little easier on the hands and what I've noticed is that when I write with this fountain pen because of the round grip my fingers are less annoyed by the ridges because there's no ridges on here it's like you know round all the way so it feels a little bit nicer in my hands as you can see this fountain pen is a little um, shorter than the Lamy and this I think it's made with resin, if I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> and if I put the cap on here, it has less heaviness in the back. But in the end, I always end up writing without the cap because I like that light and easy movement. So it's a very light pen. It's lighter than this one, the Lamy Safari. This one's heavier, this one's lighter. So it's all based on preference and trying things out. And if you're ever in a fountain pen ink store, definitely just ask if you can hold it 
because then you can feel how it writes. If you write a lot for long periods of time, I personally enjoy like a lighter pen like this. For Kaweco ink uh, or fountain pens, you can also buy converters. So I think I have a converter in here too. Yep, I have. So this one's almost done because I, like I said, I write a lot. There's like a beautiful blue ink in here. Um, and again, converters are sustainable, durable. You can use them again and again and again. You can clean them and put some other fountain pen color in there. And um, yeah, I really like it. So this converter is specially made for this fountain pen for the um, Student 70 Soul Pen because I also have another Kueco converter that's shorter because the other fountain pen is shorter. And I'm sorry if you just heard some fireworks in the background. <laughs> People be popping over here and not in a good way. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is a more expensive fountain pen, but you can tell that it is. If you like that luxurious feeling, um, I think 60 bucks for a fountain pen in uh, for a fountain pen is still quite affordable. Uh, I've been writing with this for about a month and a half and I really like it. I think it's definitely worth the 60 bucks. I currently have a fine nib on here um, because I also have an extra fine nib from Kaweco and that is too scratchy for me. So again, the nibs are what are most important to me along with the grips because this is what you write with. So if you ever go and figure out what your fountain pen should be, definitely check out the nibs. There's a lot of pen swatches with several nibs and you can see the thickness of it and it'll help you decide which nib you need. And then we have these two Kaweco Sport Editions. So um, this is Pitai. The color is called Pitai. It's a little bit see-through and this one is um, the Sport White, I believe. This one is 18.90, so 18 euros and 90 cents, and this one was 19.95. So let's start off with this one because this is the um, fountain pen that has cost me the most headache. It kind of went wrong from the beginning because what I didn't realize is that Kaweco puts like two extra free fountain pen. Um, patterns in your fountain pen and I didn't realize and my fountain pen got stuck because of it so that was very unpleasant so anyway I don't have a converter for this one so this one has a Kaweco um, brown caramel brown ink pattern in this um, and this one is not a converter as you can see these are those plastic ones that we all usually recognize the fastest um, and Kaweco actually has a really nice ink. I really, really like their inks, um, but this is like a not very sustainable option. So I think I'm gonna buy some converters for these two. But um, these ones are the smallest. I've got the screws back on, but as you can see, this is really small. <laughs> the other one definitely is a little bit longer. So I use the sport version always with a cap because it elongates it and creates a bit more balance. So this is the only version of fountain pen that I use with the cap because it elongates the handle and gives me that balance that I need. So it is a very nice fountain pen. The only thing that bothers me with this one is that the grip over here, I just call it a grip, maybe it has like a better technical term, but I call it a grip, is a little bit shorter. So this part is shorter. So I'm often just um, a little annoyed <laughs> while I write because it feels like my fingertips are bigger than the grip. And yeah, I don't really like that. And also this nib is an extra fine nib. It looks beautiful in gold, but this one, it has like the finest line when you write. Um, and for some reason there was something wrong with the nib it was sticking out very far and it kept skipping when I was writing. So it would give ink, stop giving ink, it would give ink and then stop again. So I pushed the nib in and it writes a little bit better now, but it's still this fountain pen. I love the way it looks, the white with the gold. That is definitely a Gaia Quintana style fountain pen. I love 
minimalistic pens like this. It looks so chic and so fresh and pure at the same time, but this one has been a pain in my butt. <laughs> so extra fine nib for me is a little scratchy at times, but it could also be a faulty nib. I've read that. So um, yeah, I say give it a try. And the other one that I have, which is I think my favorite to write with out of these two, is because this one has a fine nib. So when I write with this, the lines are a bit thicker. As you can see, it doesn't have like a nice golden nib. It's silver, still very pretty. Um, but this one, I really like the most. Same complaint as with the other one. I think this little grip is a little too short, as you can see. <laughs> I now have long nails, so it will touch the nib, which I do not appreciate. Uh, so I wish they just made this a little bit longer. And again, with this one, the handle is quite short. So I always put the cap on, but this and the other one, like the um, exterior are very, very light compared to that Lamy pen that is quite heavy. So I can write with this for hours because it's light and airy and I could just keep on scribbling. So. I tend to grab this one the most at this moment. So let me give you a bit of a writing example. So this is the Lamy Safari. I am writing in a Lurchturm 120 grams journal. So this is very smooth and creamy paper. I love this paper for fountain pens because it absorbs fast enough and it also looks really nice because the paper is a little bit cream colored and it looks just amazing. If you were to write on whiter people paper, you would see that the colors of the ink are a bit more vibrant, but I love that little soft um, sheen of this paper. So here we go. So this one is currently inked with a gray fountain pen ink. So this is how you'd write back in the day in school, just attached letters. Lamy Safari, Fountain, Pen. And like I said, my handwriting is quite small, so sometimes I also write like this. So this is how big my handwriting will get. <laughs> so if you have like a rounder, bigger letter, you might want to have like a thicker nib. So this is extra fine and I'll put that next to it. E F extra fine. So here is the Kaweco Student 70 Soul. This is a fine nib. So this is my favorite at the moment. This one just writes the smoothest. And this is a fine nib. F. And then we have the extra fine nib by Kaweco in a sport. And this one is just a little scratchy and sometimes it skips. Extra fine. So this is what it looks like up close. <laughs> and um, I haven't really got the best handwriting. And also because I was writing fast for this example, you can definitely tell <laughs> it's not that neat. But now you have two types of lettering. These are attached letters and this is like loose lettering um, or unattached letters. <laughs> and my hand handwriting definitely changes if I write attached in cursive, or if I write like loose letters, um, it definitely looks a little bit different. But I love using my fountain pen inks mostly for the attached lettering because then you get that beautiful cursive lettering that you see in those old books. And if I wanna write something fast, I use this version. So these are my fountain pens that I've been using for 2022. I hope you liked seeing me show them to you and Hopefully it gives you a bit of inspiration to use the fountain, fountain pens that you already have 
or if you're looking for a fountain pen to give um, yourself a start with, any of these fountain pens are pretty affordable and they're worldwide available. And also, you know, finding the right fountain pen for you can take a while because there's so many options, but if you have a store where you can try and dust them out, I suggest you do. Um, because writing with a fountain pen when you find the right one just makes journaling so much better because it gives me personally this really fancy feel. I'm like, oh my god, look at me writing with my fountain pen. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you liked watching this video. Um, this is my first fountain pen video. So if I've missed some information that you'd like me to tell you, I will definitely do that in the next one because obviously there will be more to come and I will keep on buying fountain pens because I just really love them. All right, so if you like this video in any way, shape, or form, definitely thumbs it up, subscribe for more, and have a great day. I will see you in the next one. Later.